All right, <clears throat> so it says that I am streaming, which is good. Um, <clears throat> hi, I'm going to make this real quick short video uh, for my students uh, in my animation theory class because they asked about um, they asked about exporting a, a GIF from Blender 2.8 uh, 2D animation tools and <clears throat> um, you know how to do that. So I don't actually um, export GIFs directly from Blender. My understanding is that there are some plugins that exist for this, but I don't currently have any. Uh, I would recommend maybe you know just doing a cursory Google search if you do want to do it directly from it. But um, I wanted to show how I go about creating animated GIFs from from my uh, Blender stuff. So here I have one of the latest uh, pieces of artwork from my little Nemo game. Uh, it's the, the running bed. There it goes, it's running. It's not done yet, the characters don't bounce like they would in, uh, in real life. Um, but what I do is, you know, in my scene, I have my scene all set up and I'm gonna not walk through that because I do it in other instructional videos. Um, I really just want to, you know, get get to the the topic, which is um, making a GIF. But, you know, I have my scenes, my timeline. I know what I want to render. <clears throat> so to render, um, basically what you do is you go over here to the right side of the screen in the properties window. And uh, so I have two properties windows here because that's how I do 2D, I have layers, and I usually keep the materials, uh, you know, context open here. But for this, what I'm going to do uh, in this properties window, uh, if you go and you scroll among the little tabs in the properties editor, you'll see this one that looks like a printer. That's where you do your render options. So you're going to set your resolution, you're going to set uh, aspect ratio, um, which is, you know, like if I set this to 2048 by 2048, if I have an aspect ratio of 0.5 and 0.5, it'll actually render at 1024 by 1024. So just FYI, um, you know, you set which your frames start and end on your render, like what you're going to do there. Um, you set your frame rate, things like that, though, really, you should just be keeping this to 24 frames per second. Uh, but you know, knowing where your frames start and end for the render is useful. You can also do this here at the bottom of the dope sheet editor. But the other thing you want to do is at the bottom here, it says output, you can assign where you are going to render out. Uh, so in your file. So like here, for example, um, when I render, I have you know, basically I made a folder and all my files for this particular animation go in that folder. So that's that's what I do. And I'll click cancel here because I'm not gonna change anything. But you pick where you want your frames of animation to go. And then what you're gonna do is go to, uh, in the upper left-hand corner of the window, click render and then render animation. I'm not gonna do that right now, uh, mostly because I've already rendered this animation. But I wanna show you how I I turn those frames into a GIF. But what the point is, um, render the animation out as PNG frames, and that will give you a folder like, let me do, 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 do. So that'll give you a folder that looks a lot like this. <clears throat> And what you do with these then is I will open Photoshop and I already have Photoshop open. And uh, so I don't wanna do anything here. So this is just like when you open Photoshop, I'll go to file and I'll go to open as, not open, but open as. And I will select, I'll go, I'll, I'll navigate to where my frames of animation are. And then I'm gonna pick the first frame and then at the bottom of the window here is a checkbox that says image sequence. And what's that, what that's going to do, you'll see in a second, if I hit open, um, and it'll ask me like what my frame rate should be. Again, yours should be 
uh, 24. I have 12 for re- like because I'm doing a game sprite, um, you know, and, and we just we're just making pictures at that point. They don't necessarily animate quite the same way um, because we're using the game engine to do the run. It, it's complicated, but just like ignore the fact that I have a weird frame right here. Stick yours, uh, you know, to 24 usually. So I'm going to hit OK. And then I get this. Now you're going to notice mine because of the way I've rendered it with a clear background. Um, you know, has a clear background. Usually what I do in that case, um, and you don't need to know this, but in case you ever do something like this and you still want to, you want it to not be clear, um, you know, just FYI, what you do is you make a new layer, put it under, and then uh, don't worry that it disappeared. I'll fix that in a second. Um, it does that, and then see what it does is it actually places it um, hmm. being funky let's see okay see what it did was um, I actually okay I guess not sometimes I'm usually able to just place it under but anyway um, so it has it placed over the video frame, but you see that the background happens after. Obviously that's not good, so usually what I do is I slip it under like this. Um, of course when I am actually trying to demonstrate this to people is when it doesn't work, because that makes sense. Come on. Oh, there we go. Now it's working. <clears throat> so in case everybody thinks that we know how to do things all the time, we don't. Um, so what I've done is I've placed the playhead at the frame where I want the, the animation to end. I've clicked the scissors, and then it's created this like other copy. I don't need this other copy. I don't know why you're here. And now I have a background. Again, you don't really need to know that. You're probably rendering not transparent, but if you are rendering transparent and you don't want the transparency, FYI, that's how you add a background. Um, if it looked like I was clicking around wildly a bit, I was, and that is how, in case, again, anybody thinks that uh, being an instructor means having all of the answers, no, it really just means that I'm not afraid when stuff breaks a little bit. Um, so, all right, I've got my GIF set up. Again, you don't need to necessarily worry about this background thing. I just wanted you to see it because um, then now you have it accessible. But uh, how do, you know, once I've loaded in my frames, you know, how do I render out to a GIF? Well, then I click File, and then I click do, 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 Export, Export for Web Legacy. Which usually means that this feature might be going away or might be somewhere else in the interface, but we're going to use this while it lasts. And then I want you to see this window. Now it's not showing me anything here because I it is a big GIF. It's 2048 by 2048, so I'm just going to like, you know, but if I scroll around, see, there's a tip of a, a leg. Um, and then usually what I do, depending on what animation it is, but just so that like it doesn't stop playing is I'll go down at the bottom here under animation looping options. I'll click forever and then I save. And then I, you know, tell it where the GIF goes and then it'll, it'll make it. So, you know, and that is how I end up with an image like, do, 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 waiting to load. That is how I end up with an image like this. It's black bear in a at night. Now it's a polar bear in a snowstorm. Here we go. And that's how we end up with, you know, animated bed. But um, that's it. It's pretty simple. You just really render and then load those frames into Photoshop and then uh, export from there as a GIF. Uh, that's what I usually do. I like it because it does give me a lot of control over my frame rate. 
um, which again is not as important for what you're doing with trying to keep everything at 24 uh, for learning animation. But for me, who is experimenting with like how fast we should play video game sprites in a game engine, it's super handy. Um, but that's it. Uh, thank you for watching.